a tool for randomized testing. Um, the paper's actually about Haskell, but the language doesn't really matter. And since it's such a practical paper for doing real things, I'm more going to just show how the techniques are used and you know, give you a concrete idea about how to actually put them into play. So, uh, essentially, it's a technique for randomized testing of your programs by testing properties about your programs. So, say if you have a concatenate function and you're trying to test that it does the right thing, um, you have, sorry, I'll use reverse instead because that's what's up there. Um, so you want to write a function that reverses uh, values in a list and you have some properties about reverse that you can test on it. So with reverse, uh, if you have two lists and you reverse each of the lists and then you add them together, it should be the same as reversing the lists added together before the reverse. So that's uh, this property here. Now, when I demo this, this is all in Clojure, which is a Lisp, so it'll look kind of funny with all the brackets and everything. But to read it, it's really quite simple. You just move the bracket one element over, and then it's essentially the same thing, really. So. Let's uh, come up with a reverse property. Uh, okay, so let's write a reverse func. Well, let's write the property first. So my reverse of v. So this is this is just saying for all v's, which are lists of ints. I generated lists of generated ints, we want to prove the property that uh, my reverse v, I'll prove this second property first because it's easier, uh, my reverse v equals uh, my reverse v, my reverse v. So if we reverse it twice, it should equal the original list, right? Uh, so I haven't implemented reverse yet, so we'll re implement a reverse function. Uh, sorry. We want to say Let's say we take the last element. So last element, and we add it onto my reverse. Right. So <coughs> that's not going to work either because that needs to be a list as well. This is a very naive implementation. I just don't want to use the. Let's just try it out. My reverse. Anyone. Okay. It's not going to work. Now I've got a property. Reverse twice. <clears throat> we want to try out this profit property. Okay. Slip <laughs> overflow. This exception. Yep. I know really the programming language, but I'm kind of confused because I'll be expecting that when we are like doing the reverse, yep. we will somehow like pop the element. So here it seems that we are putting the element at the beginning, but we are keeping the list the way it was. I, I would expect the same as we need to do last call. Yep. Then in my reverse call, we will have to do something to remove that last element. How, how is that working? Yeah, well. We'll see as the properties find the bugs. Obviously, it's not working right yet, um, which is hopefully going to help with the live coding because it's kind of fun. All right, so Stack Overflow exception, right? 
this guy. If empty co return. Uh, otherwise, concat, right? Okay. So, stuck over for exception still. Uh, well, stack overflow exception because we're never actually taking the element off, right? So, uh, but last, right? Huh. Okay, it passed the hundred tests that were thrown at it, right? Uh, the seed that's there. Oh, wait. sorry, I keep forgetting. That. So, when things get evaluated, they get evaluated at the bottom. So, you want to look at that? Or maybe I'll make it a little bigger. So, okay. And the seed that's there just gives you the seed for the random number generator that was used to generate the examples. So if you want to run the tests again and get the same result, you can. Right? So I've implemented a very bad implementation of reverse and tested one of the properties on it. So now let's try out a different property. So let's try concat. So we want to generate a list of a uh, vector of ints and another a vector of ints. And we want to test that reverse v concatenated with reverse w equals Ah, oh, my reverse. Yeah. Thank you. No point t testing the standard library. Concat v w. Now let me just think about it for a second. So reverse v reverse w. Concat v w reverse. Yeah. So we can test this property now. So the failing test was 0, 1. So let's just see what. One, zero. So maybe I mixed this up. I reverse VW. So one thing that's kind of cool while well, I think about this for a second is that the failing test is a vector of 0 and a vector of minus 2, 0. But one thing that it's done is it's shrunken down the example cases that's used to something that's a bit more minimal that we can test on to make it a bit simpler. Yeah, should they be reversed? Mm -hmm. These two? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Had a feeling. Cool, all right. So, now let's say we want to test property. So this will give a ex good example of the shrinking that's used. So we'll generate a list of integers. And Let's say we want to make sure that there's no value 42 in that list. Mm, not sum. Okay, so it's generated an initial failing case of this vector, which is about 10 elements long, but the shrunken version is actually just one element long which is 42. And it uses a kind of um, shrinking that can shrink on 
integers themselves. So I think this should shrink to 0 instead of 42 every time. That's because 42 will actually shrink towards 0. Um, so it's kind of nice when you get, rather than a list of really big integers, you might just get a whole bunch of zeros. Um, allows you to kind of eliminate that, that value um, as the cause of it sometimes. So the hard thing I find about testing in this way is you've got to think about the properties of your functions. So it requires a little bit more thinking than just uh, unit testing because unit testing, you know, okay, this value should get this value, this value should get this value. You actually have to think about what your function is doing, how it works. Sometimes there's, you know, mathematical properties that you need to think of. Um, the simplest one usually is if you can just apply a function and reply another function to it to actually get back the original um, value. So that was the uh, reverse property from before. Um, another way that's quite useful is if you have just a much slower version or you can think of a much slower version that's fairly naive, that you know, very easy to write, um, that can be pretty useful. So imagine, let's say, you're writing the function min, which just goes through a vector, finds the smallest element of it. You could trivially implement it by just getting the first value in a sorted list, and you can just use the standard library to do that. Um, often, if, you're, if you've got some code that you're trying to make faster, and you have a the slow version of it that was written and you know it's correct, then you can just take that, write your new version, which is supposed to be faster, and then use the old version as um, what you test against because you, it's known to be correct for, well, you think so. Sometimes you'll find bugs in the original code. Um, yeah, or how inputs relate to the outputs. So for the example before with the reverse, um, that like two you know, reverse concatted lists equals the reverse total concatted list. So we've talked about that. OK, so with this test check, well, with, yeah, with test check, which is a quick check implementation, you can use sample on a generator. It just samples the generator basically just calls into it and grabs a value. It's useful if you want to see what your generator is doing. Maybe you have one generator and you want to actually ensure that only some of the values are used. Uh, gen int. So here I've got an int generator and I want to make sure that only positive values are actually um, returned by it. So that returns a generator itself, but then if I sample it, now I've only got positive ints. Right. So uh, this sample by default does, but when you actually test um, the properties of your system using um, quit check or uh, test check, it will generate vectors or um, arbitrary numbers of uh, your values depending on your generator that you're using. Um, you could, I mean, you can make them of any sort of size. There's ways to actually say, okay, I only want vectors from this size to this size. So sample isn't actually returning a generator. It's just a way of um, applying a generator and getting some actual values out of it just to have a look at them rather than to use it in your testing. Does that make sense? So then let's say we have, uh, we want to select from some names. Bob's is not a name. So you can use gen, el gen elements. Um, so just randomly select from the list that you've got. Uh, choose. Most of these are 
very similar to what's described in the paper. So, well, and you can find them in most um, quick check libraries. So choose allows you to only generate within a certain range. Return is kind of, um, yeah, I'll avoid using the N word. Um, just returns a generator, uh, which will just generate the value that you've put in it. So if I gen sample, uh, gen return three, it'll always return three. Sometimes you just need it when you're um, writing recursive generators. Uh, I'm really powering through it. Is does everything making sense? Yeah. Yep. So, can you um, scroll your screen that way so then that would appear in the middle instead of always be passive? Uh, yeah. Mm. Just leave yourself to one side if that's okay. easy. <laughs> that's only going to be a problem for me. To <laughs> take a seat. Take a seat. As soon as he moves it, it's going to be a problem for me. How about that? Is that better? Oh, yeah. no. Sorry. <laughs> I have to pick this. <laughs> Okay. Um, gen bind just says if I have one uh, generator, uh, I think this is right. Fen B. If I have one generator, you can. Essentially, wait, I'm thinking of fmat for that one. What does it mean? It just means add one. So, yeah, so i got to forget. So, okay, fmat says if you have a function and you have another generator, apply that function to the generator, essentially, and return another generator. It's kind of like peeking into it and just applying the contents of it. Um, it's often useful. So let's say I want to um, generate ints which are powers of two. Oops, gen fmap. It says powers of two, v, two to the v, right? And gen int. Turn it, returns the generator. Then I go gen sample. Let's have a look at some of the values. So it's returning powers of two. Um, let's just try implementing a function with a bug as well. So uh, let's go that. So my ink. So, we're silly, and if v is equal to zero, we won't do anything. Otherwise, we'll add one to v. Alright, so my ink 44, it's 45. Um, now we want to test a prop of it. So let's say probably my ink we can say since we're always adding something to it that the new value should be greater than the old value. So we go greater v my ink v So for all v's, v should be greater. So my ink v should be greater than v. Cool. Finds the incorrect statement. And so 
one thing that's kind of useful is to use um, gen one of, which is a way of mixing generators together. So let's say uh, we have, um, where is my sample one? So we've got my power of two generator now. And we want to mix it in with regular ints, but only occasionally use the power of two generator. That needs to be in a list. Right. Now we have a new generator. <coughs> sometimes it'll return the int, sometimes it'll return the values of the other one. So. Um, so now what I was thinking was, well, uh, is everything making sense still? Yeah. As I rush through it, I can try some sort of bit more TDT type testing. Um, so let's say we have um, some sensors, and you've got data that's coming in from sensors. And every time you hit a, get a sample from a sensor, you want to increment a count, right? Uh, so what I'll do is uh, we, we'll build a generator. Uh, uh, yeah, sample is kind of a event generator. So we've got events coming in. Um, we'll just say sensor one. Uh, let's say sensor one pings. So the event type is ping, the sensor is sensor 1, right? Now we are going to just copy and paste property. So Positives, so plus or zero, right? So the number of events that come in should be either zero or they should be positive. Can't be negative, right? So we'll generate some events, and then we'll call our function. Event and okay, we haven't written our function yet. All this is essentially saying is call the function handle event um, initially with an empty map, you know, dictionary essentially on all the values, all the sent, uh, events each time in turn, calling it with the updated sort of count plus the latest event, right? Now we need to run and write handle event. So, um, okay. So equals first v ping, then we want to get counts v plus one. 
that. Otherwise, we'll just return counts. I'll just ignore all other types of events. Does this kind of make sense? So we've got handle event of ping sensor one, and then sensor one zero. It should. That's not right. So what's, what this is doing is if you get a ping for this sensor, just strip this up. ping if so sign no, I don't want to do that uh, so what we're doing here is we're adding two counts with the adding to the dictionary on the sensor and we're adding one to the count uh, and I still have a problem is why live coding is a bad idea. Okay, there we go. Duh. No pointer exception. Okay. Sensor one. Get counts V. Get counts sensor. Okay. I'm not doing it very TDD for. Okay. So. Does the job, right? I've got a property, pause or zero, and we'll have a test. And we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll just delete all that. Prop. So, null no point exception. It's the same thing that happened before, right? So that's because we're just trying to add one to the count. Yep. So we fix our bug because um, basically what we're doing, what we need to do is if count is nil, so current count so we've got the current count yep if current count is nil then we do something uh, sorry you count so you count da, 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 da. we want one if not we want plus one to current count, right? And so, yeah, I'm just trying to avoid getting too lispy because otherwise, yeah. Um, so now we want to suck counts. Um, Sensor uh, new count, right? Okay. Should have worked.
should have worked. Why didn't that work? Okay, so it did work, right? So let's find one issue. Now, let's say we want to make it so that we have um, not only do we have pings, but we want it so that sensors have to be registered before their pings are recorded. Um, you know, everything before the registration should be ignored. Right? So let's make this ping generator, and we'll make um, register sensor generator. Register sensor one. Now, I want to make um, event generator be one of ping generator or register sensor generator, right? Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah. So one of those. Now, I should be able to just put it in prop puzzle zero still. Gen one of it's wrong because it's not in... Ah. Cool. Now, when we register the sensor, we'll say um, I'm making this so I can handle more conditions. That's what cond is. So let's say event type is register sensor. Is it register or register? Yeah. Event type is register. Then we want to Say counts, you want to say sensors, and we want to add the sensor to it. Right? So, this is all this is just saying is it says it's saying um, add it to the list of sensors, right? And otherwise, just return nothing. When I change the event thing, I'll say uh, sensors is a set with nothing in it to start, right? So everything runs still. Okay. So now we need but now we need to test the property that um, all of the values before the register uh, are ignored, right? Um, so for all events, do that, and um, so this uh, sorry, I'll just explain what I'm thinking first. So if we reverse the list of events, we could um, just take all of the events after the registration and ignore them. And the sum of all of the events before the registration should still be, uh, should be greater than or equal to uh, the actual count. Because we should have ignored everything before it, right? Makes sense. So we'll say uh, I'll just make a handle events function, which does this for us. Right. 
So. So that handle events V should be equal to um, reverse V uh, drop while say drop until we hit sorry did I say unregister I meant sorry drop uh, while So one. Um, handle events. If someone can. And fee. So essentially, we're saying from the list of events, we want to drop every event until the initial registration, right? And that should, the result of applying all of the events where we've dropped it until their initial registration should be equal to applying all of the events because it should have ignored the initial events, right? Um, so, uh, that's okay. Let's see what it says. I haven't added a test for that. So we'll go prop before registering Nord. Why is there only one test there? Ah. Okay, cool. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Nothing. <laughs> Sorry, I flipped back because it didn't make any sense. Um, it's saying that it passes this test, but it shouldn't pass this test because um, there should be cases where it hasn't ignored it. All right. Oh. That's because it does exist. Yep. It should be until I've hit a register, you're right. And it should be first. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, this test it found was the, you know, a ping, nothing else. Right? So, what we should do is we'll say, if the event type is ping and sensors counts has v in it already, sorry, not v, sensor. So if sensors are already in sensors and it's a ping, then we increment the count, otherwise, we don't do anything. And it's passed. Now we could, how much time have I got? Not, anyway, I think you, you'll get the gist of it. So I was gonna have an unregister sensor, but I think 
much point in going too much further. Um, any questions? No. Cool. Sorry for the rambliness. <laughs>